All right, we're starting her over here, filling up. Unfortunately, fuel is expensive over here and there is no more pilots on the way down. So we're getting it for 465. Fill that up. If you guys missed the last video, here's what we were towing. This is for, uh, this is kind of neat the way they have that. Not sure how they stand it up. There's probably something underneath of it. Right back there, yeah. But everything's been good so far. We got about eight hours of a trip left. So we're gonna head down there south. He did say we were able to drop it tomorrow. This pump's pretty fucking slow, if you, uh, if, if you say so myself. All right, it is the next day. I slept good last night. I think we killed it around like 10-ish, something like that. So now it's like 8.20 in the morning. Uh, we're not allowed to drop until one. Customer was busy until then. So I've had so much time to kill. Uh, we got about three and a half hours left. I'm gonna stop at the Loves, which is literally five minutes from the drop off. So I'm gonna stop down there and just chill out for about an hour and a half, maybe search for some loads. Uh, I got a video going up at noon. We're gonna start trying to post them at noon again because I got a few of them coming, but I mean, this time everything's been all right. I do, once we drop off, I'd like to hit the Walmart um, and also try to find an auto zone or something because I would like to replace that fan uh, that because they didn't have one so I mean while I'm down here if the weather warms up and whatnot I'd like to just replace it um, and for those wondering no the fan having one blade out yes it's unbalanced but no it's not going to take out the water pump because the water pump is not connected to the fan on the Cummins at least on the power strokes I understand it is but um, I definitely want to get that replaced I would have replaced it I, I went in to get a price for it when I was back there, but they literally didn't have one and they could not get one same day. And the basic principle is you just need to get going. So I'm gonna do that. We're gonna do a fresh oil change, top off the diff or top off the uh, transfer case, I should say, and then also do the fan while we're at it. So, you know, I know a lot of you guys, oh shit, oh fucking big bumps, New Mexico sucks. But uh, I know you guys, a lot of you guys like the automat or the manuals, and I get it. I loved my manual for a long time. But learning how to properly shift a 48RE for towing has just been an absolute game changer. I don't have to constantly shift all the time. I don't gotta hear people bitch at me because I don't use the clutch when I'm shifting. And I'm really enjoying the 48RE. Um, unfortunately, there are some things that I've learned, like, well, obviously, put a lockup switch in your truck, but when you're shifting through the gears, second gear will lock if you put it in two, only at a certain RPM, and first gear will not lock at all. Like, it'll it'll make the, it, the slippage last, but it won't lock. So, that's where I like the lockup switch, but like, little things like that, like if you hit your brakes hard going in downhill, it'll downshift you to third. If you use, if you're in tow haul mode and you hit the button, three times uh, overdrive off off tow haul mode it'll kick you back to third you can rev match it and lock it going down mountains but a lot of times like in cities and shit like I'll use second and if I know I'm not going to go fast enough I'll actually use first and just use the lockup switch so really uh really like I, I've never had an issue with a trans overheating I've been letting the converter slip a little bit uh in the last like 10 minutes just to get the temp up but like I, I'd be cruising down the highway at like 110 degrees. Like this thing just does, this transmission does not get hot no matter how much weight I put behind it. So the only thing I would say in the future is we're probably just gonna do a valve body so that we can handle more power. But other than that, I mean, I'm just gonna leave this transmission alone. I would like to pull the transmission and do a billet uh, flex plate eventually. And I noticed a little bit of a rear main leak. So we're probably gonna end up pulling the transmission again um, it's just a quick in and out job. I just need to get the billet flex plate. It's not a need, but I'd like to do it. All right, you guys were wondering about the fuel mileage and um, those tiny homes, unfortunately, I don't care how new of a truck you have, you're gonna get single digit fuel mileage. But this trailer, we got 322.8 miles to a tank and my gas light's not on yet. So I probably got uh, another five gallons or something. So what I'm gonna do, is we're gonna stop here and I'm gonna fill the tank because we have 94 miles to go. So in turn, to run this trailer probably cost me maybe 200 bucks in fuel. 
and this one pays about a grand but everything's been all right nothing no issues yet um it's really nice today in new mexico look at all this trash there's piss there's piss yeah that's just laziness i keep a trash bag in the truck and uh so you guys are hating on the wrong fucking people i mean be real i'm out here fucking working my ass off trying to support a family and you got people like this who do shit like this that's just disgusting i don't i don't see the point like just carry around a trash bag and throw it away when you get to a fucking truck stop at the very least my two cents i'll show you guys keeping the cab organized so we got this here i got my blanket backpack and then this is my trash bag should i just throw this they got them Freddy Fast Bear fucking trains down here. We are eight minutes from dropping off. And I told the broker, I'm like, yeah, I'm dropping off at one. And he texts me at 1230. And he's like, any updates? And it's like, no, it's fucking 1230. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just, I have a short fuse for certain shit. Like, if I tell you one thing and then you start blowing my stuff up, I'm, uh, yeah, it's not, I don't know. I just, short fuse. All right, we're here just waiting he's coming now so I know if I need to back in or pull in all right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna back one road down and then we're gonna back in instead of pulling in because if I pull in there's not enough room so I'm just gonna do my backing up thing and uh, we'll go from there all right backed into that one pulled up back into this one and she's straight there you go. It's all dropped. No damages. Alright, so I usually try not to film it drop off, just one of those. Try to get in, get done, get it over with so you can see there's a side road. Here's this small little gate. Truck barely fits through it. So what I did when I pulled this way, I backed the trailer into that right there and then pulled it into that one back there. So not bad, we are gonna head to Walmart now, go get oil. I'm realizing that I need to just take advantage of the time that I have right now because I don't have anything hooked, booked right now. All right, camera was full, so I got kicked out of it. Um, I need to just take advantage of the time that I have now while I'm out because I will not have the time when I get back home because the shop is completely booked for three weeks as one person and I have a second guy that's part-time that helps out, but it's nothing you know, nothing crazy. So, I'm just gonna go do the oil change, we're gonna go grab a fan, and I might potentially try to do this coolant leak real quick. Um, after we did the fan and everything, and with it running hot, it I think it, when there's a lot of pressure in the cooling system and when it's full, it blew out the passenger side where the AC, bra the AC compressor's at, there's an O-ring back there, and it blew that out, so I just need to replace that O-ring. Guys, I'm making crackers. We're heading to go get a fan now. Finally, I found one. See guys, I'm not the only one. That right there, that is a skill. You guys hating or just jealous that you can't do that? That dude's out here doing a wheel bearing on his fucking Honda Civic in the middle of New Mexico. Dude's over here sending the jakes and he's got a trailer hitch. Hell yeah. Let's see if he gets on it. Cause that is, it's a nice Pete. So I went and got a fan, I've got oil. They didn't have an MO285, so I got a Mobile One filter. Um, we got an air filter to replace uh, the filter that I got from Sam. Should have had him uh, sign it so I could sell it to one of you crazy bastards. All right, Sam filter going in here, and we're gonna put the new one in. Also, I did take the windshield wipers off because for some reason they're not working. Um, I'm gonna be redoing all that when I get back home. So I'm not worried about it. All right, new filter is installed. I'm gonna say I did notice a big difference going from an open turbo to putting that air filter on there. This thing uh, definitely was a restriction. Definitely was a restriction. Unless one of you guys want it, I do not. All right, so I don't have my fan clutch tool on me, so I used a vice grip. A, there's an eight mil down there. 
and she's free. So, oh, there we go. Grab that quick. All right, here's the old one that should have been replaced, but we didn't replace it because they didn't have one available and nobody in the area did. And there's the new one. So we're gonna quick do a transfer, throw that away. Real quick, just to show you guys too. That's the fan pulley, that's the water pump. They are separate on the Cummins. All right, check it out. She's all in, new fan. All right, old filter, new filter, as per instructions. What's that say? Oh, don't pre-fill? Huh, don't pre-fill oil filter? Wow, it's almost like people in the comments will argue that. Oh well, it's fine. I'm not gonna pre-fill it. I'm gonna do what it says to do. I'm gonna put some lube on the thing. After 12,500 miles, that filter came right off. I really do find it neat that nobody knows how to agree on anything. Like, as simple as an oil filter. Like, even this one. They just put a little dab on the top, and that's it. It's like, if you're just doing a fresh oil change and you've been running this, there's plenty of oil in the system, you're not gonna hurt anything. All right, we are gonna drain this son bitch right here in the Loves parking lot. Loves loves me. I spent a lot of money with Loves. I will not spill a drop. Look at that. All right, so my coolant funnel's a little dirty right now, and they didn't have rags at Walmart for some reason. I did go and get this so we can fill the dip. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in a quart of marble mystery oil and then I'm gonna cut the Guys, I'm not good at aiming. I missed a little bit. So nice and easy that goes in. Unless you miss like I did. That was a whoopsie. So then what you do is you take the old jug and you fill it with all the old oil. All right, dumped it all in here. I'm gonna just throw that in there. Save that for later. And then this is good clean waste oil for one of you 12 of guys. All right, well, first start up since the oil change. All right, we have oil pressure. See how fast that came up? Y'all, oh my God, I gotta fill my oil filter. Okay, don't force it on me to do it. I'm not doing it. Hey, funny enough, there's no shake. I'm gonna have to get the temperature up really, really hot. So I'm gonna, the only thing I haven't done is fuel filter. So we're gonna change the fuel filter. I don't know what to do with this. I'm gonna change the fuel filter um, as soon as I see this like starting to go down, but I'm gonna do it when I get back home when we put the new injector back in it because I gotta get another cross tube and a bunch of other shit. So let's get out of here.